So, in the meantime, Hanford isn't just isn't just sitting on its hands. It spent what twelve billion dollars on uh, the vitrification plant. They're planning to move this awful liquid stuff to to uh, double layered um, containers. Or, I mean, so indeed, when the journal said that that this that WIP might be the only option, that was really a bunch of baloney. There is a need to do something at Hanford. Right. What we, my organization, national organizations, organizations in Washington State have been saying, uh, and we've said it in writing to the Department of Energy, is what should be done is additional double-shelled tanks at Hanford should be built, and the waste from the leaky tanks should be put into those containers as soon as possible. The additional tanks are going to be needed to for to stage the liquids and the sludges before it can go into the glassification plant. So they need it anyway, and that's the way to quickly, that's something that can be done quickly. It doesn't require building new facilities at Hanford to handle this stuff. You, they've already gotten some, one of the reasons they thought a lot of the tanks weren't leaking anymore is they'd gotten some of the waste out of them above the leak lines before and put it into other tanks, double-shelled tanks. Well, that's what they need to do. They could do that quickly. And and both the governor, the former and current governors of Washington State, the current governor of Oregon, as well as other people, have been saying for a while to DOE, you need to have some new tanks. Right. So, so that's what needs to happen. And that can be done quickly it will address the issue of the leaking until the the vitrification plant hopefully will eventually operate. Unfortunately, the vitrification plant is way over budget and way behind schedule, and it is a complicated process. I mean, we're talking about waste that is highly radioactive, it's got lots of chemicals in it, um, so it's very difficult to do what needs to be done with the with the waste treatment plant. Um, also, unfortunately, there are clear documentation that there have been the contractors who are doing it in some cases have been more interested in making money than making the process work. There's even a current example of falsification of records. There are a number of whistleblowers oh, with, the, with the treatment plant. I mean, one of the buildings for the treatment plant has actually been put on hold because whistleblowers identified some major flaws in the construction that wasn't being done correctly, so now they have to go back. Oh, and so, so Hanford is a very big, it's a technically big problem, it's therefore a political problem, but it's also a problem in terms of how the, the whole project has been managed. Um, but again, the solution to the Hanford problems has to be found at Hanford in terms of taking care of the short-term problems, getting double-shelled tanks, eventually getting a vitrification process that works so that all the more than 50 million gallons of waste can be put in a solid form so there won't be a need to worry about leaking anymore. Yeah, so right? Have to, to, and, to and, and, and eventually, obviously, we need to have um, other long-term disposal sites, not only for this kind of high-level waste that Hanford has and Savannah River site has and Idaho has, but we have 104 commercial nuclear power plants in this country that are generating every day spent nuclear fuel, about 70,000 metric tons of it, that are eventually going to need some place to go to. But it's going to take a while to figure out where to put it and how to do all the technical things that are going to be needed for that to happen. So that's why both at the power plants and at places like Hanford, we need to get the waste in stable forms so it's not leaking, it's not getting into the soil and the groundwater, which it has at Hanford, and we don't want it to do anymore. Um, and it has its Savannah River site so that we get to the situation where waste is contained where it is, it can safely stay at those places for the decades that it's going to need to until we figure out how to come up with permanent disposal sites. Um, so those kinds of things can and should be done. They are much better short-term solutions than saying, you know, we're going to 
treat it at Hanford and ship it to WIP or someplace else if they could come up with someplace else. Um, so the, this recent proposal doesn't really make any sense at all. Uh, and a lot of people, as I say, I think people in New Mexico can say no to it not saying we don't care what happens at Hanford. We do care what happens at Hanford. And the right thing to happen at Hanford is to spend money to, a little bit of money to have the tanks to get the waste out of the single-shelled leaky tanks into double-shelled tanks so that the Hanford situation is better taken care of without foisting on people along the transportation routes and on New Mexico um, stuff that really shouldn't be coming here anyway.